My name is Emmanuel Ituma. I am a writer. Um, I'm from Nigeria and um, I've written a novel, I've written a book of travel stories and um, I write about art. My name is Eliza Nyangwe. I am a journalist and uh, from born in Cameroon, uh, raised in lots of different parts of sub-Saharan Africa, um, UK based for 17 years but have only moved, just moved to Amsterdam. Um, so yeah, that is how I would describe myself now. Right now, um, I'm sort of trying to write about um, um, the southeast of Nigeria um, because my family is Igbo. And so my thinking, my reading, my, you know, my obsessions uh, are related to that part of Nigeria. Um, and I guess especially um, history, the history of the place and more contemporary history such as the Biafran War. Um, yeah, and that's that's that seems like a very sad thing, right? But but that's I mean yeah, that's what's on my mind most of the time. <laughs> what interests me now? So um, I set up a project called the Nzinga Effect, which was focusing on African women's stories and defining them pan, as you know Pan African women. So the five regions of the continent and the diaspora, and seeing the diaspora as being a self-including group. Um, and so to look at the sort of shared experiences and stories of women around the continent and I've been particularly interested for the last two years in sex um, as a sort of space of power and how do African women navigate um, sex and sexuality um, uh, particularly as if you're living in the West but as a journalist I've mostly covered uh, international development, global affairs, Africa we are thinking of um, Angola, Algeria, and Liberia at this point, yeah, for very reasons. Yeah. yeah. As someone who travels so much uh, in Africa mm. for work mm. and has had family and has lived in so many different places, what an extraordinary opportunity to go somewhere without an agenda for once. Mm. I'm more interested in themes than in places and in narratives mm -hmm. specifically. So mm. what does I'm that person who gets asked, no matter where I am in the world, where am I from? Yeah, yeah. I'm often asked, are you Nigerian? <laughs> yeah. And so to have that experience of being othered, even on the African continent, is something that I could be exploring. It doesn't really matter where I go. Absolutely. So I wouldn't like to pin, uh, you know, uh, pin us to one specific geography because it could evolve and that's the beauty of yeah. being given the permission to travel because as people who might carry African passports that's not something we wake up often and just do we're, like, and just do, we're yeah, gonna yeah, spin travel, the globe yeah. and go yeah, yeah. and here is finally uh, a laissez passer uh, mm -hmm. you know a carte blanche to explore Africa yeah. like yeah. why be limited so part of my 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 the thinking that I've been doing the last say five years has been what does it mean to be some kind of mute observer in these mm. kinds of spaces, right? If you can't communicate, you're immediately seen as a threat, right? Mm. Especially if you're in North Africa, in parts of the continent where migration is a big issue, right? So you're black, you know, you're sort of walking around and you can't speak the language. So you're sort of immediately considered um, not just order, but um, some kind of um, suspicious um, order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I feel that that's never, you can never, I've done some writing about that, but that's still not resolved in my thinking. I've been thinking about uh, what is travel writing mm -hmm. and, um, and at the same time trying not to think about it in a way that requires research because invariably whatever I read will shape how I see what yeah. I then do and I want to give minimal external influence. I'm not trying to be your first resource to pick off the shelf if you want to see X place, mm -hmm. uh, but more, um, yeah, just how you will connect with my story. That's what I'm hoping to, to yeah. I'm hoping to learn myself and then hopefully people read something that they find interesting in that, um, that they will learn themselves too and that that place will provide um, an extraordinary backdrop and the mm -hmm. sort of occasion for interaction. Absolutely. I don't know. Yeah. 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 So I fear that I will be drawn away from the precipice, maybe a little too soon, um, and into space that is comfortable, and into behavior that is comfortable, mm. and storytelling that's comfortable. So that's my fear.
part of the challenge I'm having to myself, and maybe that's a combination of the hopes and the fear or the challenge, is that I want to push that form, right? I want to think about, you know, first of all, traditional travel writing. You know, I've written about travel before, but um, I want to write about travel in a different way. I, I feel that I've had this kind of um, opportunity before, right? I mean, of course, not in this kind of scale. So I'm really excited about having, you know, almost like doing it again, if that makes any sense, right? With um, better resources, you know, uh, you know, more support in the very practical sense, because I didn't have that the first time I was traveling. Um, you know, it was more hands-on, you know, the greedy in a sense. So now I feel that I'm going to have the opportunity to just be a writer, you know, not having to administer anything, <laughs> right? So I'm excited about that. Um, and you, what are you excited about? So truly for me, this is a wonderful opportunity for this um, Cameroonian girl who has written her whole life to be able to see where that goes without the confines of education, paying the bills, all the things that determine your path for you far more specifically. Um, someone else has deemed me uh, capable and so I'm going to believe them. Mm. Ha 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 